I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. I was on Fox recently and we were talking about how to communicate with people when they don't share your same values. So specifically in this time, they were looking at what if someone's wearing a mask or not wearing a mask and you disagree Mm -hmm. with that in light of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So Nikki, I'm wondering, can we talk about how to communicate most effectively with families or people that we love today? Absolutely. And of course, you know, as I'm sure, I'm sure it comes up in your practice a lot, very large topic in my sessions with patients, you know, inside or outside of the pandemic. I mean, it's a kind of a central focus a lot of times. But well, is that because we just all struggle to communicate from time to time? Like we don't know how or we avoid conversations. I think the answer is both, honestly. Yeah. I mean, because, you know. I always we, say that we would be good politicians because we never actually answer a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny, funny, you should, funny you should say that because actually when I'm uh, talking about how to communicate with loved ones, family members, friends that people are stuck with, you know, I, I often talk about validation, which, you know, we could talk a little yes. bit about in a moment. But, but I always say to people, I'm like, look, if people in Congress knew how to validate, oh man, would we get, they would get so, so much act, work done. They would done. actually so, be getting stuff done. But this yeah, is not a political podcast. This is not a, a this is not a, that. yeah, that's, that's right. And, and what I'll say is in this Fox, in this Fox 5 New York uh, uh, segment, they were looking at what if, you know, someone within your family doesn't believe in wearing masks, but you are really mm-hmm. adamant about wearing a mask right now in a pandemic. And I thought it was a really, t- obviously timely, you know, conversation. And, and I'm, I want us to also think about how this will also, you know, um, apply after like outside yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah but in the pandemic i think it, it is a challenging thing because you know as scientists we recognize yes. the medical literature so we're not reading political literature no and i think masks like um decrease ex- like spreading about 70 percent or something like that yeah it's pretty high i also read yeah. a thing today in the la times um saying that they actually think it also you know we keep talking about it not spreading but that they they do think it also protects you, which, which right. makes, I mean, to me, it makes logical sense, right? right, um, right. Because, you know, you've got something, something covering, covering your nose, covering your your mouth. nose and mouth if someone coughed or sneezed near you. Absolutely. Well, hopefully, <laughs> but I've noticed where sometimes people have yeah. the, the mask over their mm, mouth, but not their I know, nose. I know. That, I, that bums me out. I'm always yeah. like, oh, oh come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Totally, I, totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, so what what was it that you were suggesting that segment? I'm curious. I'm, I'm assuming probably something I would also recommend, but I'd love to hear um, how you, well, uh, you, know, how key, you say it. Yeah. Key, what, key for me in any of these challenging conversations is asking open-ended questions and listening. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that's going to be a theme behaviorally across any kind yeah. of psychological cognitive flexibility is, am I asking questions? Am I being curious? Mm -hmm. And so as a skill, what are the open-ended questions to ask? So you might say something like, oh, so what are your beliefs around the mask? Or what have you learned Mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the, the utilization of masks um, as it relates in your life or in Mm -hmm. your area? So I think that's one example of an open-ended question. Well, and I think, uh, the word curiosity is really important that you're oh, bringing yes. in. Yes. yes, you know, you know, you know, I, I love me some curiosity. I do love that about you. <laughs> yes, I do love me some curiosity, and you know, curiosity is really an integral part of a mindfulness practice, right? It's like I always think of, yeah. you know, the phrase in Buddhism like "come to the practice with a beginner's mind," which sure. for our listeners uh, basically means like coming to the practice as if it's the first time, like to that find you never... beginner's mind. There it is. Everything yes. is the, as if it's the first time. As if it's the first time, or I kind of say like, or like like how a, a kid. In, interacts with things, right? Yeah. Uh, children are very um, skilled at beginner's mind, yes. as are as our dogs. I would oh say another God, animal, love right? Our dogs. Oh, love our dogs. It's like as the first our dogs. Time, my brother always comes. Is like it's like they it's like they've never <laughs> seen me before. It's the first time they're seeing me. They're so happy. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> yeah, be- get, beginner's mind. There we go. Every time. Yeah, every time. Yeah. So curiosity is is correlated with openness and willingness, right? And so yeah. if we're trying to understand someone's point of view or experience we absolutely have to access that. And, you know, I really am always interested in how, you know, the brain works, obviously, obviously, um, because when we're feeling very um, emotionally dysregulated, which uh, that basically means like very intense emotion, it shuts down our curiosity, right? We get like very narrow in our perspective and it actually activates a lot of judgments, right? And so if somebody's doing something that you disagree with or that you don't like, it's very actually difficult to to be open to their point of view. Yes, you can't. I think you're not open to it actually. No, no. You, well, well, um, your initial response is not open. Correct. No. It's like the yeah. immediate reaction is to shut down. Right. That's right. So 
again, if curiosity is part of mindfulness, you know, what we've been talking a lot about in this podcast is how that's a behavior that you can cultivate, that you can yeah. learn, right? So if somebody, if, if you uh, are prioritizing wearing a mask because of, of the data out there and the facts, also very important to us as uh, behaviorists, we're very, mm-hmm. into, very into facts, and someone else doesn't believe in them because of you know well let me just say like i think people find their own facts so i think like that's we're not going into this episode but i know the person who's not wearing the mask is also have is presenting their own set of facts well well, maybe we can well also maybe this is another episode maybe we can (laughs) define facts so facts from behavioral point of view would just be in like uh data right something that you know, I don't know, the sky, it's a sunny day, the sky is blue, like that's, right. that's a it's fact. It's measurable. It's measurable, correct. Yeah. So people often confuse beliefs with the facts. With yeah. facts and we yeah. all do that. Like that, that's, that's a human, that's a human brain problem, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think, so like what I'm thinking about, I'm sure there's yeah. at least a listener that, that has uh, seen a video where someone's like, well, God didn't give me a mask, so I don't have to wear a mask. Right. Or there was one that was like, you know, you can't make me wear underwear either. You know? so, right. <laughs> right. And again, right. It's, so those are beliefs, not facts, you know, and I totally, think, yeah, totally. And, and that's so, a distinction there. A distinction. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, um, yeah, that's uh, important. Important to to be clear about that. Um, yeah. You know, I guess in, in the name of behaviorism and science here. Um, yeah. But yeah, so if somebody has a belief that you disagree with, your immediate reaction reaction is going to be to to shut down and like activate a lot of judgment. So if you want to ask open ended questions, right, yeah. it's going to require a practice of that's right yes cultivating and growing curiosity which we can we can learn to do we can learn to do and i sometimes i even say that with partners is like you can pretend to like so i think i'm Mm -hmm. not always super curious about something and i can i can engage in that process mindfully you know so where i'm not judging myself for it but you know it's uh, you see that a lot in in couples where one person likes race cars and the other person likes to you know play volleyball yeah not that one of them is better than the other and it's not that one has to choose one or the other it's a matter of engaging with curiosity and they're just yes. different in, into those into those things and accepting that you go do your race cars and i'm gonna go do my volleyball that's exactly right that's exactly right, right. And, and when i think what you're really highlighting is um the, the pretending is like you know we we say in behavioral therapies act as if yes right yes, and because yes. sometimes people, i don't know if you have this experience but sometimes patients say, say to me like oh so i'm supposed to fake it like yeah. i'm faking it and i'm like well I mean, kind of, I guess, yeah, but, but I, say, I yeah. however, I like more like to frame it as it's learning a skill that if you're, you know, yeah. nobody like we could say that with any behavior that you've never done before. Right. Like you're and just like trying it, you know, and I know you'll hear this because then the clients we work with say, well, why do I have to be the skillful one? You know? Oh yeah. Hear yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear and that on the regs. Yeah. On uh-huh. the regs. And I'm like, yeah. well, it's cause you're here. You know, yeah, so like yeah. you're doing the work. And so yeah. sometimes it does. Like sometimes I wish I didn't have to be the skillful one in my family. Yes, yeah, same. You know? <laughs> same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's life, you yeah, know, it's life. and I just accept that this is my role, you know, in this moment in, the, in this life. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the, so that's like some of the behavioral science stuff. I'll be curious. Um, well, before I jump to the Zen stuff, tell me sure. if there's any other sort of behavioral uh, techniques that you suggest for people that are trying to communicate with a family member or with someone who um, mm-hmm. doesn't agree with what they're saying oh i I think we absolutely got to come back to validation yes amen yeah so i would say and again pete curious if this is your experience as well most people actually misunderstand the definition of validation like you're like i want they go i want to feel validated and then what they mean is they want to be agreed with right (laughs) yeah Yeah. so i would say like that's sort of like a um like a misunderstanding of the definition out in the world. Yeah, because like know? sometimes initial counselors will be like, their validation is like, oh, sure. So yeah. keep cutting yourself all the time. That's great. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, like, no, that's, no, that's, that's not, that's, that's not actually, validation. That's actually reinforcement. And that's, that's exactly, not, yeah. And, exactly. and so we don't want to do that. So right. let's, let's help highlight like what validation could look like. Yeah, totally. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to borrow from, uh, the, the, the famous, uh, Dr. Marshall Linehan here, who is the creator of uh, dialectical behavior therapy, which is uh, known as DBT in, in yep. the third wave, uh, uh, behavioral therapy family and validation. Um, she does some great, by the way, some great worksheets. If you're, if you're looking for something uh, more concrete Google here, you it. can Google it, <laughs> um, get her, get her books. Her um, book, yeah. yeah. Or buy her book. Um, Validation, you know, as she defines it, is it's finding the kernel of truth yes. in in it basically an opposite perspective. That's the first part, and then the second part, which which really resonates with me, is 
understanding that a behavior, a thought, a situation, an emotion makes sense given the context. And a better way to say that is just like, it's not saying like, oh, that's cool that someone did something that you don't like or agree with. It's just like, can you understand how that happened or why it's happening? So, you know, the example I always share with patients is like, you know, let's say I'm working with somebody who is struggling with anger and they come in and they tell me that they got so angry, they like punched a hole in the wall, right? I can validate that person. That doesn't mean that I'm going to, validating that person doesn't mean, hey, that's totally okay that you punched a hole in the wall. That's not okay. That's not appropriate. That's not safe, right? But, But what makes sense to me if the person's struggling with anger is that they're anger got so dysregulated, they got to a point where they lost behavioral control. So I might say, look, I I can understand how that happened, right? Right. When you get that angry, you lose And there's your validation. I can understand how that happened. You got angry. Yes. And and I would say, and, and then that's the second part, right? (laughs) And then you, the word and, and it's a big one. We'll talk about ands and, you know, in future episodes Throughout this entire Yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. Entire podcast. People have already picked up on that because, you know, if you're not a psychologist, if you're a psychologist, you've picked up on it because you know that we have that language. And if you're not a psychologist, you're like, why do they keep saying and? And, but? <laughs> and, and a little hint, it's called a dialectic. All, That's all, right. my, all my, my, best, my best friends from college who are not psychologists, I have, I have uh, shaped them into yes. <laughs> just to identifying dialectics. So anyway, so, so, so then the and functions to say like that equally, in addition yeah. to understanding, you can then give feedback about what's not working or what's working. Yeah. So that's that's how I that's how I would coach people in terms of you absolutely. Know, I mean, validation. You know, and I and I we see it as like bookends. You know, it's it's a, yeah. also, it's a skillful way where you're so, acknowledging that you hear in the beginning and then coming in with like what the behavioral change could look like in the end. And frankly, I often use this you know, with, with people across all different types of disciplines. Yes. You know, so especially and, with some kind of executive coaching, you don't ever need to say, but again, yeah. you know, because that shuts people down. That's like relational frame theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and also like you mentioned, like the how and why, I think I focus more on the how because why mm-hmm. uh, um, automatically assumes judgment. And so what we're trying to do is not answer why in, in the way that I, it, with the way that I teach this. Well, well, I think well, I'll, I'll be clearer here. When I say why, I'll get I'll get really geeky behavioral here. I mean the function of something, exactly. the function yeah. of behavior. So, yeah. so in behaviorism, we basically say that behaviors happen for a reason; that right. they serve serve a function. That we don't do behaviors for for no reason. Mm-hmm. So, trying to understand understand that, you know, is right. what I mean. Awareness, by the why. insight, exactly. Yeah, so and, we, and I just well, I should say I want to add one other dorky research thing about please. validation Switch. is that uh, there's actually quite a bit of research that when we feel validated, so yeah. again, another way of saying that is like feeling understood or heard, it actually regulates emotion. It does. So we can validate ourselves, we can validate others. So when we feel understood, guess what? We're more open to hearing feedback from somebody. And the key there is feeling understood, not agreed with. Correct. And I think that that's a big distinction there because again, we all want to be agreed with, I think. I mean, I don't know. Oftentimes I don't because I want to be challenged. (laughs) Of course, you're like, bring it on. Bring it on, challenge me. (laughs) I think, you know, that's all, in my opinion, that's why I think I don't work with children. Not to say that, I just don't feel challenged in that intellectual kind of way that I do with working with executives and high performers Mm. um, because I think it is challenging at times when you're, you know, you have, you're stuck in your ways, things that you've done already work, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think with the, with younger folk, you just need a different skill set that I just don't have. Um, But yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I was just thinking, I'm like, I don't work with kids because I find it so challenging. <laughs> so challenging. Yeah, <laughs> but for in all a different, different way. ways. Yeah, yeah so for different ways. Um, yeah, but but absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people do. Okay, like by the way, it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I have to just put this yeah. out there about the yes, kids. Yes, please. I was so now that gym. So I don't know what it's like in California now, but we'll bring this to this moment. But gyms are still closed here in New Jersey. They just shut them down yesterday. Shut them down. Oh, yeah. again. Yeah. So we haven't been open yet since the mm-hmm. closure. But, but my one gym is doing outdoor workouts and it's wonderful. And now it's slowly gotten busier and busier. So it feels yeah. less wonderful Sure, uh, because I'm still like, I have to remind like we're still in a pandemic. So like, yes. we don't want to be sweating and spitting on top that, of each other. That's right. Yeah. Right. That's my, that's my, be- that's my belief with based on some facts mm-hmm. and some data. Mm-hmm. Um, but one person had a child there the, the other day and I was like, I get it. But I was also thinking there was like probably 50 people in this class. Only one mom brought her child. I, I, how many other moms were there with children mm. that could have brought them or like had some other, you know, parenting issue. Anyway, mm-hmm. I felt like Samantha on, um, uh, 
Oh my God, why am I forgetting? Oh, Sex, sex, in, the sex city? in the City? Thank you. <laughs> There's this episode where she says, uh, what do you mean you can't have your cell phone on? There should be a sign that says no children allowed in restaurants <laughs> um, because I think I don't have children. And so I love, I love children and children love me. But it, there was this moment where I was just like, why is this kid? And the kid, of course, was like totally trying to like play with me as I'm there <laughs> trying to really get a good workout on it. Was of course, very yeah. Experience. And I, I think doing this podcast is is um, helpful because some of the stuff is so front of mind. It is anyway because the work we do. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I was just so much more mindful with this kid and the mom where I was trying to just accept that there's something, you know, and compassion that there's something about this mom that made her have to bring her son you know, on that day in that moment. So speaking of children, sorry, this is a well, no, it's so, well, I was, I was just thinking, and I'm sure, I'm sure you were uh, running through some communication skills in your mind that you, you may have needed to use uh, if, I, if, I, if it yeah. got a little too much. Yeah. Well, I thought about it, but then I also thought I just, I chose compassion instead of communication yeah. still yeah. because I felt like, let me do, this is my work yeah. in my work area. Yeah. Yes. Um, the kid was adorable. And again, of course the kid wanted to play with me, but it was just so funny that inevitably there's this energy that like when you, don't necessarily want to engage kids are just so open to that energy yeah, it's yeah. less like it's less suffocating yeah totally that's compared exactly. to the grandma who's like let me pinch her yeah. teeth and do <laughs> that's, x y and z that's but, right. but i want to um let me take our tangent yeah so say on. i was to say let's let's well just like in, in mindfulness right our minds yes. wander and now you're gonna pull it back here right i yeah. wanted to bring in some of the eastern stuff so yes please in do the yeah. zen world with in terms of communication the one thing that i think is important to highlight is what they call the eightfold path mm. and so the eightfold path in zen is the fourth noble truth mm-hmm. that's a lot of like the academic stuff of it but really what i was so um, linked with when I learned mm-hmm. and started reading and studying this stuff was it tells you what to do because I found mm-hmm. historically religion or spirituality tells you what not to do. Uh, it's you like see? it's much more it's much more uh, proactive. It's so proactive. Yeah, I love that. Right yeah. speech, right, oh, right mind, yes. uh-huh. uh, right action, yes. right mindfulness. You know, so there's there's all these things, and so in terms of communication, it's right speech. You know, mm. so that it's not, it's, and, and the teaching really goes into like gossip, you know, where it's really trying to say like gossip doesn't serve anything. It's holding on to some negative things mm-hmm. about the person mm-hmm. from the past or the or future. And so the right speech I was thinking in this communication piece mm-hmm. is about really connect. I connect it with right mindfulness so that you're yes. aware of how you're feeling when yeah. you're interacting with this person. And then you're committing to this speech that's for the health you know, ultimately this eightfold path is for the health of all beings. Right. You know, so that it's not just for me and you as we're talking, but it's for, it's for the it's universe. For, yeah, for the universe. Yeah. yeah. Which I think that's, is, that's, oh, like, be- oh, I love, I mean, I think that's, that's yeah. absolutely beautiful. And, and I, um, I really like that idea of right speech, you know, even though it's so funny because in a, in a CBT lens, we always stay away from language like right and wrong though. That's right. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just saying that only because I think, tell me if I'm wrong, Pete, that that term right, right speech, like if we were to translate that into modern behaviors and we would say like effective or workable speech, like it's hundred percent, right? Yeah. Well, and I also wonder now that you're saying that when you say translate, yeah. who knows what the actual translation sure, is. Sure. That's such a great point. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, such a great, that's such you know, a great literally point. Literally yeah. thinking yeah. because, you know, you can read two or three different translations from, you know, Japanese, Chinese, you know, Hindu. Right. And, it's going to be totally knows? different. It's going to be yeah. different. Yeah. Know? It's going to be different. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I really like what you're saying too, in terms of there's um, the the why it's linked to right mindfulness because it sounds like you're saying that there's a a sort of intention in how you're talking, right? And so yeah. in mindfulness, we always talk about like slowing down. So That's right. if we go back to what we were saying in the beginning of the podcast, that you know when we disagree with somebody, like our attention narrows, like we get really like stuck in our own viewpoint or judgment. That's right. It, it's not mindful, frankly. It's no. like reactive, right? So it sounds like from from the Zen perspective, it's actually saying like slow down, like yeah. act with with purpose, like that's, get, that's get right. curious before yeah. before you say something. Yeah, because a lot of times, and we, I think most social issues are because everyone's trying to be heard or agreed with. Yeah, going of back course. to that yeah. versus this idea of like I'm trying to listen and understand. I don't I, think anyone actually tries to take the effort. Because it's a lot of effort. It's Let's so put much that effort. Out there. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of effort. It's yeah. a lot of effort. There have been several, t- you know, in my life where there's, I've had conversations where I feel angry, of you know, course. speaking with somebody. Of course, same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, and, we, we, we all have our, we all have our 
uh, our buttons, right? We all have the things like based on our learning history or our current experiences, even our wiring, honestly, um, where we're more likely to get really activated. And, And a lot of times to your point, I think like sometimes we get really angry around things that are actually like really important to us like at least yeah. that's true for me like i think oh, the totally. that really like make me mad or i feel really like passionate about yeah or it's like it's like injustice or things aren't fair that's that's where most of us tr- tend to sort of um dig our heels in frankly and then it gets it's really hard to to hear that somebody disagrees or sees it a different way yeah and a lot of times in that moment what you're describing there is because it feel it's it's at the it's at my core you know yeah. the core it could be a core belief it could be vulnerability around sort of emotional exposure mm-hmm. to you know somebody not totally understanding mm-hmm. um, I do think it could even relate back to childhood experiences where you yeah. feel like you know that yeah. you were just pushed over and not heard and so you know these are all sort of variables and for me that's the art of what we do and and I think I mean clearly you and I could kind of keep talking about this probably for a lot longer but believe it or not we're all already out of time. I cannot believe it. <laughs> yeah. Where Actually. does the time go? Time flies when you're having fun. But it you know, does. I think just leaving thinking about um, you know, being understood but not having to agree. This has been when East Meets West. I'm Dr. Pete Economo. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.